that evolution by favoring fitness drives truth to extinction. Yeah. How, how then can we deal with reality and what are the implications of that? It's such an extraordinary result. It is at first a little bit surprising and you, you would wonder how could true perceptions be useful? How could it possibly be that true perceptions could guide useful behavior? And fortunately we have a nice metaphor with the advent of computers and laptops and, and, and user interfaces that I think can help us to see what's going on here. Uh, if you look at your laptop uh, interface, the desktop of it, mm -hmm. um, you might have a, a blue rectangular icon for a file that you're working with and that, that icon might be in the lower right-hand corner of your, of your screen. Does that mean that the file itself that you're working on is blue or rectangular or in the lower right-hand corner of the computer? Well, obviously not. Those, I mean, anybody who thought that really doesn't understand what computers are about or what interfaces are about. The color of the interface has nothing to do with the color of a file. A file doesn't even have color. The shape of the icon has uh, you know, nothing to do with the shape of the file. The file doesn't really have a shape. And so none of the properties of the graphics on the screen are supposed to reflect true properties of the file in the computer. The whole point of the desktop interface is to hide the truth and to guide your behavior. What if reality as we know it is nothing more than a carefully constructed illusion? What if everything we see, hear and touch is merely a representation, an interface designed not to reveal the truth, but to hide it? This is precisely the provocative idea proposed by cognitive scientist Donald Hoffman in his theory of consciousness. A theory that challenges the very foundations of science, perception and existence itself. But intriguingly, this radical perspective bears a striking resemblance to some of the deepest teachings of Hinduism, teachings that have echoed through the ages, whispering secrets of an illusory world and an ultimate unknowable reality. Hoffman's theory stems from a simple yet powerful question. Does evolution favor truth? The answer, he argues, is a resounding no. In his groundbreaking research, he uses evolutionary game theory to demonstrate that perceiving objective reality as it truly is would not have been advantageous for survival. Instead, evolution has equipped us with an interface, a user-friendly set of perceptions that help us navigate the world efficiently, not truthfully. Much like icons on a computer screen that represent files and folders without revealing their underlying complexity, our senses do not reveal reality but merely present a simplified, species-specific interface. This is a staggering claim. It suggests that the world we see is not an objective reality but a virtual construct designed for survival. What we perceive as space and time, objects and forms, may have no independent existence outside of our minds. And if this is true, then what of consciousness itself? Hoffman argues that consciousness is not a mere byproduct of the physical brain, as materialists claim, but rather the fundamental fabric of reality. He proposes that instead of consciousness emerging from matter, it is matter that emerges from consciousness. Reality, he suggests, is a vast web of interacting conscious agents, each constructing their own interface to navigate existence. This notion that consciousness is primary and that the world is but an illusion has a striking parallel in Hindu philosophy, particularly in the concept of Maya. Hindu scriptures, especially the Upanishads and Advaita Vedanta, have long declared that the world we perceive is not the ultimate reality, but an illusion veiling the true essence of existence. The great sage Adi Shankaracharya, one of the foremost exponents of Advaita Vedanta, proclaimed that Brahman, pure, undivided consciousness, is the only reality, while everything else is merely an ephemeral projection. Much like Hoffman's conscious realism, Advaita Vedanta posits that our individual experiences are shaped by a limited perspective. The ego, much like the perceptual interface Hoffman describes, 
creates distinctions and divisions where none truly exist. The world, according to Hindu philosophy, is a transient mirage, much like Hoffman's virtual simulation. To see the world as it truly is, one must transcend the limitations of perception and realize the infinite, non-dual consciousness that underlies all things. Hinduism also speaks of the mind's role in shaping reality, a theme that resonates deeply with Hoffman's ideas. The Bhagavad Gita, one of Hinduism's most revered texts, states that the mind, when clouded by ignorance, perceives multiplicity and separateness. But when purified, it perceives the oneness of all existence. This aligns with Hoffman's view that consciousness is not a singular entity, but a vast network of interacting conscious agents, just as the Upanishads suggest that the self, Atman, is not separate from the universal consciousness, Brahman. Hoffman proposes that our individual conscious experiences are but fragments of a deeper, interconnected reality. If Hoffman is right, then the implications are profound. Science, which has long sought to uncover the objective nature of reality, may need to radically reframe its approach. Instead of assuming a physical world that gives rise to consciousness, we may need to accept that consciousness itself is the foundation of existence. This would not only revolutionize physics and neuroscience, but could also provide a bridge between science and spirituality, between Western empirical inquiry and Eastern metaphysical wisdom. One cannot help but wonder, have the ancient sages of Hinduism always known what science is only now beginning to grasp? The rishis, those enlightened seers of Vedic knowledge, spoke of consciousness as the sole reality thousands of years before Hoffman's theories emerged. They described the world as a grand illusion, much like Hoffman's interface, and urged seekers to pierce through the veil of Maya to experience the ultimate truth. But if reality is an illusion, what then is the purpose of life? Hinduism offers an answer, liberation. To transcend the illusion and realize one's true nature as pure consciousness is the ultimate goal. This is moksha, the liberation from the cycle of birth and death, from the endless game of perception and misperception. Perhaps, in a way, Hoffman's theory of consciousness is pointing toward the same idea. If our perceptions are merely a constructed interface, then breaking free from that interface, understanding that it is not the truth but a means to an end, could be the first step toward a deeper understanding of our existence. Could it be that the sages of ancient India and the scientists of today are converging upon the same timeless truth? Could it be that reality, in its truest form, is something far beyond our comprehension? Something that lies beyond perception, beyond illusion, beyond even space and time? Perhaps the answer has always been within us, waiting to be realized, waiting to be awakened. In the end, Hoffman's theory does more than challenge our scientific assumptions. It forces us to reconsider the very nature of our existence. And as we stand on the precipice of this profound mystery, looking into the abyss of the unknown, we must ask ourselves, is reality something we perceive or something we must awaken to? Perhaps just as the sages have always taught, the truth lies not in what we see, but in what we come to know beyond sight, beyond mind beyond illusion itself.